Good morning, my friends, and welcome to our New Testament Challenge. I'm Pastor Roger Vest with Douglasville First United Methodist Church, and today I'll be reading to you the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 24. Hear now the words of our Lord. So as Jesus came out of the temple and was going away, his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. And he asked them, you see all these, do you not? Truly, I tell you, not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. And when he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when, when this will be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. And Jesus answered them, beware that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All of this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to be tortured and will put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away. And they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. So when you see the desolating sacrilege standing in the holy place, as it was spoken of by the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. The one on the housetop must not go down to take what is in the house. The one in the field must not turn back to get a coat. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing infants in those days. Pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath. For at that time there will be great suffering, such as not been from the beginning of the world until now, no, and will never be. And if those days have not been cut short, no one would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, these days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, look, here's the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce great signs and omens to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Take note, I have told you beforehand. So if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, don't go out. If they say, look, he's in the inner rooms, don't believe it. For as the lighting comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Now, immediately after the suffering of these days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give us light. The stars will fall from heaven and the power of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Now, about that day and hour, no one knows whether the angels, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, and one will be taken, and one left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake there for you, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Who then is the faithful and wise slave whom his master has put in charge of the household to give the other slaves their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that say, slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. Truly, I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if that wicked slave says to himself, my master is delayed, and he begins to beat his fellow slaves and eats and drinks with drunkards, 
The master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at, at an hour that he does not know, and he will cut that slave into pieces, and put him with the hypocrites, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Welcome back, my friends. Um, I want to share with you some thoughts and reflections on the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Um, again, we're in the last week of Jesus' life leading up to uh, the crucifixion and resurrection. And uh, he does a lot of teaching here. And as we've noted before, um, things have gotten a little harsher Um the words he, he's speaking now are not easy to hear. Uh, he talks about the destruction of the temple, uh, signs of the ends of the age. He talks about persecuting, the desolating sacrilege, um, the coming of the Son of Man. Uh, and he said the lesson of the fig tree and the necessity for watchfulness. Those are the things I really want to focus on here. He said the fig tree is like this. He said, you know, when it after winter, when it starts putting out leaves, you know spring is coming. You know soon the fruit will appear, and the flowers will appear, and then the fruit. And so it gives you an idea. He said, you know, there, there are going to be signs that tell us uh, that the end is coming. And then he talks about, uh, he says, about that day and hour no one knows, not the Father, uh, or not the Son, not the angels, but only the Father. And he says, you know, if a, a, a man knew when a thief was coming, he'd be aware and would stop the thief from, um, from um, stealing. Um, so he said, just be awake, uh, be aware, um, be ready. What does that mean for you? What does that mean? Be ready for uh, when um, you are called, uh, when Christ comes back, uh, if he comes back in our lifetime, or when uh, Christ calls you home. You know, are you ready? Uh, what does that mean for us to be ready? Um, you know, do you have your life in order? Have you, uh, you know, we know we have this assurance that Christ died for us. And so we live our lives um, as disciples of Christ. We live our lives in such a way that um, there's no doubt I know where I'm going to be um, because I've given my life, my heart, um, myself uh, to Christ. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. And uh, so um, in one sense, I don't have to worry. You know, you don't have to worry if you're ready. And that's what he wants to talk about. He's telling people, um, even though, you know, this gospel of Matthew, people were reading that. And early on in the church, they were anticipating that Christ would come back any day. And so uh, there was an urgency uh, to being ready. Um, maybe not so much now, you know, 2,000 years later, we're not quite certain when that'll happen, but there is still really ought to be an urgency to being ready because we don't know, you know, what will happen. We don't know. We don't, we're not given, um, a certain period of time, you know, each day is a gift. And so we need to be ready each day, uh, for uh, Christ to return for, and so uh, just, you know, again, live your life. Ask yourself, are you ready? Are you ready to meet Christ? And what does that thing look like for you? So some thoughts. Um, we're getting close to the end here, but uh, hopefully this has been helpful for you. Take care, my friends, and we'll see you again tomorrow.